Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make just a comprehensive video going through all the different ways you can set up airflow alerts and notifications for your airflow DAGs. Um, I'm gonna show you both kind of the traditional function driven way where you define functions and then call them within your DAGs. And then I'll also show you some of the newer paradigm uh, within airflow where you actually have defined notifier class classes, which are essentially an upgraded version of those previous functions that now uh, you actually have, you know, company provider provided <clears throat> functions like the Slack notifier class that you can just fill out and call to trigger Slack notifications uh, across all of your DAGs and just define a global notifier like a global Slack or email notifier so that anytime any kind of failure or state occurs in all your DAGs, you don't actually have to copy and paste that code in to, to say, hey, use this notification path, you actually just have that happen automatically because the notifier itself exists. So gonna start with the more traditional function driven way and then we'll move into the notifiers. Um, but above all else, I hope you learned something. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is just go and find a place to define them. Um, and if you're using Astronomer to run uh, or define you know, your Astro runtime and package your airflow, then you'll add it to your include directory. But really, wherever, however you're running Airflow, just gonna add these files to wherever you would store your scripts um, or any kind of files that aren't DAGs. So within here, we're just gonna call this uh, notification functions dot pi. Uh, and then within here, we'll start defining our different notification functions. Um, so we're gonna cover email, Slack, MS Teams, Amazon SQS, and I'll also just show you kind of a boilerplate way to define functions for custom alerts. Uh, and so the first thing we're gonna need to do uh, for email alerts is actually set up an SMTV P backend. So we're actually gonna need to set up where uh, this is going to be sending emails from. Um, so here, what we're gonna need to do is go into the Airflow config file um, and then define for our uh, for our uh, email backend, and actually let's go for set these up as environment variables. Um, so within here, go to env, add in. So our email backend is going to be just you know sending NSMP from our Airflow utils. Um, basic, you know, uh, just kind of boilerplate dummy uh, SMTP details here. Obviously, I don't want to put my own details up on the screen. But essentially just set up your environment file or your environment variables with this list of both your email backend to tell Airflow to use a specific email backend, send emails from, uh, and then the details of how to connect to that specific email backend. Um, so after you've set that, you're ready to start defining your notification function. And here what we're going to do um, is first define our function. So here define email on failure. Um, and then what we can do um, is either you can copy and paste this into an Airflow DAG, um, which would look something like this. So alert DAG.py. Um, and then here, go and import decorators, util dates, days ago. This is actually going away in Airflow 3.0, right so don't use this anymore, but I'm still in Airflow 12.9 here. Um, but here, you know, just basic dummy DAG, on failure comeback, callback, um, and then saying, hey, use this send email on failure. So on failure, call back and pass the context of what that failure was to this email function. And then you can define the email function here. You could also do something like from include import uh, send email on failure. Uh, and that would allow you to just say, hey, call send email and failure with the context without actually copy and pasting the entire code into the DAG. Um, but I just wanna show you kind of both ways. Highly recommend doing it the second way where you have a separate file and then include it in, you know, pull it into any of your DAGs as needed uh, because otherwise you're gonna just be copy and pasting boilerplate code into all of your DAGs, which is just a huge pain. Now, the next alert type you can use is the Slack alert, right? And so here we're gonna define a Slack alert um, where you're just importing the webhook and then building the message and then sending out that Slack webhook notification. This is really honestly the old school way of doing this. You probably don't wanna do this anymore. Really the best way to do Slack alerts these days is through the Slack webhook operator. 
um, where you define a function or you can just use this as a task within your DAG. So that's, you know, during using the dot execute just allows you to use an operator as a function. Uh, but really you could just have this in your DAG to say, hey, if this task fails, use trigger rules to then trigger the Slack webhook operator. Um, and here you you know have a little bit less of flexibility in defining the message. It's you know just it's a little bit of a trade-off, but largely is the better way to send Slack notifications is using the official Slack webhook notif or webhook operator, or as we'll see in a Slack second, the Slack notifier instead. Um, so then the third way uh, we can use is. Microsoft Teams. So here we're gonna use the Teams incoming webhook operator um, to actually fire out a uh, alert. And that's because Teams hasn't developed any official connections for Airflow, unfortunately. Um, so you're really still reliant on just using a generic request and a webhook to actually pass that um, along. So here what we're doing is just building the webhook URL where you would replace this with your actual Teams URL uh, and then build the message. So type, context, um, you can actually define a theme color, which is fun. Um, Teams supports different colored messages, which is cool, I guess. Um, and then the title and the text of the message as well. Uh, and here you pass in the context. So, you know, you call this with the context similar to how we did that with the email operator or the email notification method. Um, and just passing that in, building a message with it and a link to the log URL uh, and describing the DAG ID as well. Uh, building a JSON message and then just sending that out, posting the request to that uh, Teams webhook um, to have that Teams message occur or pop up within that channel. Um, but fingers crossed, Microsoft will eventually actually uh, develop an official Teams notifier because that would be really nice. Um, third, and something that actually triggered me to make this um, was Amazon SQS alerts. So what if you want to have, what if you have AWS credentials um, and you want to use those to just trigger or post a message to a SQS queue if a uh, task or job fails or even succeeds. Um, and so here what you do is define a function that looks something like this. So define SQS alert, use the boot to three client. Um, so that's the Amazon Python client. Um, and here build the queue URL. So define, hey, using the SKU or using the SQS uh, region and then build in the specific URL with your account queue. Um, obviously, it also relies on you having AWS default uh, defined and having a connection that it can use or will default to use. If you haven't done that, you'll need to default or define a connection within this Bluetooth 3 client. <clears throat> then similarly to Teams, um, we're going to build our message again with the context from that failure message. Uh, and then we're going to send that message. Um, and just dump that JSON into uh, the SQS queue. So it'll have a message appear with this defined body that we just built. Um, so really simple, uh, Bootsu 3 luckily is pretty multi-purpose here. And so just wrapping it in a Python function lets you use it as a notification channel. Now, final function I wanna show you is just kind of a generic function for creating custom alerts. So if you use an alert type other than the ones I just showed you, all you're gonna be doing really is just defining your context Right, and then within here, just using the context, and that's gonna have your task instance, DAG ID, log URL, uh, and basic information around the failure that's available to you know just pull from that dictionary, the context dictionary here, and then you can use this to with Jinja templating to build your messages um, and then send them out to really any external service. It's quite easy to set up the template for it. Um, and so that, that's really all I have on the, on the function side of things within uh, Airflow alerts and kind of just, you know, how to send Airflow notifications in general. Um, I guess the last thing here is just defining, you know, hey, what function is going to do what alert. Um, so you're gonna wanna set typically, you know, default args um, array where you say, hey, on failure callback, this is going to use, you know, the send email on failure function to send that email, right? Um, and it's also always going to, you know, pass in the context. Um, so this is how you set up your DAGs to use those functions then to actually um, have those alerts or to trigger those alerts when they fail. Now, the next thing we're going to do is show you how to set up notifiers. So these are more of, you know, kind of age, I would not agents, but defined pathways that you don't need to explicitly import and say, hey, you're going to use this for a particular DAG. Instead, you define them globally. And every time a failure occurs, it will automatically trigger these. So here in the DAGs folder, we can just define a notifiers.py file. 
Um, and then within this file, what we'll do um, first is import a few different packages and requirements. So the base notifier class, this is just the base class that you'll need to inherit from to create notif notifiers. Um, we'll also import the send email ut util uh, task instance so we can pull information around a task instance, um, the context around a failure, uh, requests for requesting uh, JSON and requesting from APIs, um, and then also JSON for handling information we'll get from those APIs, um, and Boot23 for interacting with AWS services. Um, and then I'm going to show you how you can build a few simple notifiers. So the first one we'll create here is just a basic email notifier. So here, finding the email notifier class, um, and we're just inheriting base notifier. Here, building a notifier where it says, hey, you know, very similar to what we defined earlier, but again, just in a notifier uh, style. So this can be implemented globally without all the copy, cutting and pasting and just boilerplate code, which Airflow is trying to move away from. Um, so here we're just using a send email function, notify, um, and just passing in the information around that task instance. Then we can also define a Slack notifier, similar to what we did previously, where you have the Slack notifier inheriting from the base notifier, uh, bringing in a webhook URL um, to actually fire the Slack notification to. And then we have this notification function, which is bringing in the text, the context from that DAG failure, and then posting that to that Slack webhook um, with the headers. And you'd also likely want to add a bearer token here as well. Um, and then, you know, whatever your, obviously your token context or contents are here too. So call it token contents. Um, so that would be the Slack notifier. There's also an official Slack notifier you can use similarly. Um, I just want to show you how to build your own um, because if you're using Teams, you will have to build your own, unfortunately. Um, but you can use this one for building Teams. Um, so just, you know, I'll, if you're in my Discord channel, you can get this code for me. Um, so Teams notifier, implement a webhook. Again, just fire into the Teams webhook um, and then pet defining our Teams message just as we did previously within the Teams function, but just within a notifier class. Um, and then similarly, I'm just gonna show you the SQS notifiers and the uh, generic notifiers because we're starting to get a little bit redundant here, um, but just the SQS notifier here as well. Again, very, very similar function um, where we're just initializing a connection using Boot23, then using that to post a message to that SQS queue. Um, and then similarly here, just a generic notifier body. So you have a framework for defining and creating your own notifiers to those more long tail solutions. Um, so that was really everything I wanted to show you. Oh, and then also how you can add notifiers to your DAG is instead of using this methodology, you just import from notifiers, email notifiers, Slack notifier, whatever one you wanna use, um, initialize it, and then you just say, hey, um, so for any alerts on failure notify, use that combined alert. So just much cleaner definition and, and managing of those notification channels. Um, and that's gonna become increasingly important as you get more and more event-driven architectures um, flowing through Airflow. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.